So let us get back to studying uh, convex functions and convex sets. So what is what is a convex set? Not necessarily linear combination, convex combination. Yeah. So let's say you you have two points x and y in R n. Okay. A convex combination of these points is defined to be convex combination of these is of the form. So this is the convex combination of these points x and y. So you choose a theta, a number between 0 and 1 including 0 and 1, right and you get another point z which is theta x plus 1 minus theta y and this z is said to be a convex combination of x and y. So what is the difference between convex combination, linear combination and affine combination? So what is, what is linear combination of two points? So this is convex combination. A linear combination would be some theta 1 x plus theta 2 y. I mean the theta 1 and theta 2 need not be related right. So that becomes a linear combination and an affine combination you also also allow theta to be beyond 0 and 1. I mean you have in that would be an affine combination in some sense and that is usually called. But but really I mean in this case we are interested in convex combination. So convex set is a set where a convex combination like if I if I end up finding a point which is a convex combination of two points. So let us say I consider a set C and I choose two points x and y in C such that their convex combination also lies in C, then C is a convex set. Okay. So an example could be so a set of this form for instance. If I choose any two points in the set, let us say x in any other point y. So convex combination first of all would lies um, on this line segment joining x and y, right. So does every point on this line segment lies in this uh, in this set x in this set c in this example, right. So and this is true not just for this and x and y but you can choose any other x and y and this would be true, right. So this is an example of a convex set. Some, a non example would be something like this right. And now if I choose a point x somewhere over here and y somewhere over here and I draw the line segment joining x and y, I can get few points and more than few points uh, such that it does not lie in C right. So this is a non example. So this is not a convex set. This is a convex set. Okay. How about a set like this? Is this a convex set? Is this a convex set? Yes, right. So this is a convex set. How about uh, this set? So C is defined to be this. Is this a convex set? No, right? Why? So if I choose a point, like let's say I choose points two and five, and I choose uh, theta to be half. So then uh, three point five, for instance, does not lie in this set, right? So this is not a convex set.
ok. Any questions on uh, convex sets? All right. So, what are convex functions? So, what are convex functions? So, what is the definition of a convex function mathematical definition? So, a function is said to be convex. So, what does this say? So, suppose I take two points x and y which are in the domain of f ok and I look at their convex combination of these two points lambda x and 1 minus lambda y. So, the function evaluated at the convex combination of these two points is basically less than or equal to the convex combination of the uh, function values at those points. So, what does it really mean? So, suppose I have a function like this and this is my this can be x this is let us say y ok and I choose a point I choose a point which is which basically lies on the convex which is the convex combination of x and y. So, let us say I choose this particular point over here. So, the function if I evaluate the function at this point the function the function evaluates at this particular value right. Whereas, if I look at the convex com combination of uh, the functions f of x. So, this is my f of x this becomes my f of y. If I look at the convex combination that always supersedes the function value evaluated at the convex combination of x and y. So, this is this I mean this is how uh, we sort of define the convex function. So, if I look at the convex combination of the function values that always supersedes the function evaluated at the convex combination of the individual points ok. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is my point x right and this is my point y a convex combination I let us say I end up choosing a point somewhere over here. Now, the function evaluated at this particular point is here whereas, if I look at f of x and f of y a convex combination of it would lie over here. So, this value is here right and this is the value over here. So, ok. So, let me let me redraw it. Now, suppose I choose my x this is my x and let us say this this is my y. So, this point would be f of y and this point is f of x. Now, let me like if I consider this uh, convex combination of points x and y and let us say I choose somewhere over here that is my z right. So, this z turns out to be lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y. Now, the function evaluated at z is over here this is f of z. Now, the same convex combination if I look at uh, if I draw a line. So, the function evaluated at z. So, this is this is f of z and f of z exceeds or f of no sorry not f of z this is the my bad this is the convex combination of f of x and f of y. So, this exceeds the value f of z 
right? And this is uh, this is the definition of a convex function. So when you, I mean, this need not be always the case that I mean. So for instance, uh, if I consider, I mean, a good a good way to sort of view a convex function is, I mean, it should look like an upward facing parabola. As long as you have that kind of function, I mean, that's a I mean, that's a picture that you should keep in mind when you think of when I say convex function. A picture that you should keep, uh, keep in mind is it should be an upward facing kind of parabola. Okay, I mean that's that's not always true. So, for instance, if I look at a constant function, right, something like this, which is f of x is constant. I mean, this is trivially satisfied with equality. I mean, so this satisfies the definition. So, constant function is also a convex function. Okay, so this is f of x equal to c. This is also convex function. So, a constant function is a call convex is always a con uh, convex function. A function of this form for instance, which looks something like this, this is also a convex function. Even though this it is constant in this region, I mean it acts like an upward facing kind of parabola. So, this is also a convex function. But at the same time, if I look at a function which which behaves something like this. So, this is an example of a non-convex function. Why? So, suppose I now if I consider two points and I draw a line. So, the function at any convex combination in this case. So, the function evaluates to a la larger value than the convex combination of any two points right here. So, so this is this becomes an example of a non convex function. Okay. So, and you, you can clearly see this function does not look like an upward facing parabola it is specifically in this region it does not look like an up in fact it is a downward facing kind of parabola. Okay. So, whenever I say convex function always think of functions of this form over here. So, convex functions should always look something like this and this is one way to simply visualize. So, why do we care about convex functions and convex sets? So, convex function every I mean so, first of all I mean in the context of convex function why do why did we really need convex sets? for this to be well defined right. So, we say what is the definition of a convex set if x and y lie in the set c then their convex combination should also belong to that set right. So, you want the function to be well defined on a convex for, for combination of two points x and y right. So, it makes sense to define these functions convex functions over a convex set. The other thing the other reason why we study convex functions is suppose I find a so for a convex function suppose I end up finding a minima to it right let us say this is the local minima. This local minima also happens to be a global minima. There is no other uh, minima which is better than this local minima right or smaller than this value. Similarly over here if I end up finding a minima over here because this function is constant. So, everywhere it attains the same value, but then there is no other point at which it attains a value small which is smaller than this. So, every local minima is a global minima. So, for a convex function let me write this down. for a convex function every local minima is also a global minima. But can we say this about uh, this non convex function? No right. So, in this case for instance if I end up finding a local minima here. I can always find a better local minima here right. So, not every local minima is a global minima. So, for non convex function that is not true, but for convex functions you may have multiple local minima, but all of them are going to be global minima as well. Is this clear? And that is why it makes sense to find uh, work with convex functions because the moment you find one of the minima you know that you have arrived at the globally optimal value and you cannot improve the function any or make it any smaller. So, it is I mean you can terminate the algorithm pretty much.
whereas if you arrive at this particular local minima there's no way for you to know whether you want to terminate the algorithm and keep or keep looking for better solutions even if you arrive at here right maybe a better solution may exist somewhere like far off from this particular local minima so when working with non convex functions giving global guarantees is very difficult you can only in most cases you can only talk about uh, locally optimal solution okay is this clear all right so let's some uh, example of uh, examples of convex functions so a simple example is half x square so this is the most commonly used example of a convex function and if you look at how this function looks like and please looks like this right with a uh, x star equal to 0 being the optimal solution so this function is minimized at x equal to 0 how about e to the x is this a convex function e to the x right right so the graph for e to the x looks something like this so again it looks like an almost looks like an upward facing kind of parabola so this is also an example of a convex function okay what about log x is log x a convex function so what is the graph for log x look like right so does this look like an upward facing parabola no right so log x is not a convex function so not a convex function but at the same time if i look at minus log x so minus log x would have a graph and this looks like an upward facing parabola and this is a convex function okay so functions uh, so these type of functions which rather look like a downward facing parabola instead of upward facing parabola such functions are called concave function and we talk about minimizing convex function we talk about maximizing convex concave functions right because these are sort of uh, why because if f is a concave function implies uh, minus of f is a convex function right so log x is concave but minus log x is convex is this clear any other questions on convex functions what convex functions are yeah no no not not so this should be true right so if it's a convex concave function then minus f should be a convex function so for instance if you look at so the question is is every non convex function concave and that's not the case right so if i invert this particular function uh i mean so this is a non convex function this is this is neither convex nor concave you can say that this is locally convex here locally concave here locally convex here again locally concave locally convex but uh, not every so function is concave if it's if minus of f is like a is convex yeah okay given system if we draw a graph for the function do we break down them into convex function or there are some other so in real systems i mean in real optimization problems if you if you arrive at these kind of objective functions all you can say is that you have arrived at a locally optimal solution that's all you can say for general class of functions which look something like this when you are solving this in practice i mean you cannot guarantee that you have converged to a globally optimal solution you in most cases you can provide local guarantees you can say that you have locally converged to one of the optimal solutions it may be the best it may not be the best maybe you will try a different initial initialization and try to converge to a better uh, local minima but 
I mean, you cannot provide guarantees beyond saying that we have converged to a locally optimal solution. Yeah. I mean, you can check, right? Like if you make minus f, you right. So there are there there can be certain functions which are both convex and concave, right? Like constant functions. I mean, you can view them as concave. You can view because if you maximize it, it will give you the same value. If you minimize it, it will give you the same value, right? I mean, you can you can have like both ways. That's that's fine. I mean, the definition of concavity is basically I mean related to convexity. So this this class of function is also non-concave. This is not just non-convex; it's also non-concave. Okay. So let's look at a few operations that preserve convexity. So we are going to use capital gamma to denote class of all convex functions. So this represents class of all convex functions. So the first such operation that preserves convexity is non-negative weighted sum. So that means if I have f1 and f2 that are convex, so that means they lie, they belong to this class capital gamma and I consider weights w1, w2 greater than or equal to 0, then w1 f1 plus w2 f2 that also belongs to gamma. So non-negative weighted sum of convex functions is also a convex function. Is this clear? Can you think of an example? So, some common examples are when we look at L1 penalty, right? So, norm of x, one norm of x, right? By definition, this is defined to be and mod x we know has is a convex function, it looks like this, an upward facing parabola kind of thing, right? So summation of so this is uh, this is a non-negative weighted sum of uh, mod x size. So this is also a convex function. Okay. So when we look at pi's, which are numbers between zero and one, so if I consider those pi's, so these are non-negative weighted sum of negative log pi, right? And negative log x we know is a convex function. So this is another example, and so on. Like so, if you have uh, x square and x to the power four. Right, so something like this, half x square plus one fourth x to the four. Is this a convex function? Yes, right, because this is convex, this is convex. In this case, both have both happen to have the same optimal solution as well, right? And sometimes you will see, and we'll also look at some uh, augmented Lagrangian methods later. Instead of working with these class of function, which are relatively difficult to optimize, you also add something to those functions which are relatively easier to optimize, maybe also share the same optimal solution and that way this augmented sum or this, this kind of function you can also, I mean this, you can try to optimize it much better than just trying to optimize the original function. So that is one particular operation that preserves convexity. Another operation is uh, point wise max. So let's say you have functions f1 and f2 that belong to these functions, right? Uh, that belongs to a set of all convex function. So then max of f1 and f2 would also be convex. Yeah. So if f1 and f2 are convex functions, then max of f1 and f2 are also, uh, it's also going to be a convex function. A uh, good way to visualize this is, let's say you have lots of, uh, uh, lots of functions like these. So in this case, we are just considering linear functions and so on. Now I'm doing pointwise maximization. So I'm just, so at this point, this function sort of is maximum. So I select this. At this point, then we select this particular patch 
then this patch and then this patch right and you can see that this is an uh, convex function. So, point wise max is something that that is a convex function and we are going to look at the application of it when we talk about uh, Lagrangian dual. So, point wise max is another operation that preserves convexity. Another common class of uh, transformation that preserves convexity is a fine transformation. So, if f of x is convex then f of a x plus b is also convex. Okay. So, under affine transformation convexity is preserved. So, an example would be we know that this is a convex function right. So, this implies this would also be a convex function and this is an example where we try to find a solution to a system of equation a x minus a x equal to b right. So, this is a convex problem. Yeah, I mean that is a good question. I mean, if you are defining the two functions, and like for instance, if you are defining point-wise max or non-negative weighted sum, I mean at least they should have a overlapping domain. If so, if not, then I mean basically you you restrict it to the domain, basically the intersection of the two domains. So this is one example. Another example would be log barrier function, right? So minus log of x is convex. So, this would also be convex right and this is this is often the barrier method that we use when we want to enforce a transpose x less than or equal to b. So, this is the uh, barrier function that barrier function approach that we use right. So, we add this barrier to the objective function so that any violation is heavily penalized right because log anything less than 0 is going to be in uh, negative infinity right. So, log is not even defined. So, log 0 is negative infinity. So, if you start in a feasible set this barrier basically prevents you getting out of that feasible set and this is this barrier method is used when we when we try and solve constrained optimization problem in an unconstrained manner. Yeah, all of this will be dealt I mean I am just giving you examples I mean as of now we are just looking at convex function. So, all of the examples that I am giving you will be used later when we try and develop algorithms. Okay. So, we now look at, so how do we identify, I mean like if I give you a function, how do we identify that a particular function is convex, I mean one way is to use the definition that f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda f x plus 1 minus lambda f y. And, but in certain cases it becomes very tedious to do that right. So, the question is can we look at better ways to identify whether a particular function is convex. So, let us assume that function is differentiable right, assume f is differentiable. So, that 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 is to say that gradient of f of x is defined right. So, the first order condition necessary and sufficient condition for uh, convexity is f is convex if and only if domain of f is convex and f of y is greater than or equal to f of x. Is the statement clear? So, f is a convex function if and only if first of all I mean as I said right it, it only makes sense to define convex function over a convex set, but because otherwise you I mean the convex combination of a two of two points may not even I mean f may not even be defined there right. So, f is convex if and only if domain of f is convex and if you choose any two points x and y in the domain of f this inequality holds true. 
this is the first order this is called to be first order condition because of this uh, first order I mean they use the first order derivative or the gradient of the function here. So I will just prove this statement uh, one way uh, I think leave the other way as an exercise. So I will just uh, prove this implication one way. So So, since f is a convex function right, so we assume that f is convex. So, f of x plus lambda times y minus x this is same as f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda times x y and by definition this is less than or equal to lambda times f y plus 1 minus lambda times f of x right. This is just using the definition of uh, convexity so from definition of convexity. So, now if I sub subtract f of x on both sides is this clear and now I divide this by lambda and consider the limit when because this is true for every lambda in 0 to 1. So, this is true for f for all lambda in 0 to 1 right. So, I divide this by lambda and consider the case when lambda goes to right. So, this is what is this left hand side now? This is nothing but the derivative of f in the direction y minus x right which is to say that this is I mean this quantity is nothing but gradient of f transpose y minus x. So, derivative of f in that direction that is less than or equal to f y minus f of x and therefore you recover the right hand side or Is this clear? So, I will leave the others, other side as an exercise maybe it can be part of your homework problem we will see right. But what does this uh, geometrically sort of represent right. So, so if you have a convex function which looks something like this I choose a point y. So, this is your f y and this is your f of x. So, if I define the tangent uh, basically the derivative is nothing but the tangent defined at this particular point right. So, f of x plus this t basically y minus x times this. So, the function always sort of uh, I mean you maybe end up over here and this function always lies above this value. So, that is the sort of geometrical sort of uh, or representation of this particular first order condition ok. So, this is the this is this is what we I mean this is what this particular condition really means and we will we'll eventually use this in lot more context and we because this is directly in terms of the gradient. So, when we design optimization algorithm we will use this particular inequality a lot more in that context. Just as we have first order condition we also have second order condition. or convexity. So, we now assume f is twice differentiable right because we want hessian to exist or second order derivative to exist. So, we assume f is twice differentiable.
this is the second order condition for convexity. So obviously f is convex. So we, we have to have domain of f is also convex and the Hessian of f is uh, positive semi definite or to say that in scalar sense I mean f double prime is greater than or equal to 0. So when what is the Hessian of uh, let us say or this if I choose f of x to be half x square what is f double prime x? 1 right which is greater than 0. So, this condition we know that half x square is convex. So, if f is twice differentiable f is convex if and only if hessian of f is positive semi definite. So, everyone knows what positive semi definiteness is right. So, that means uh, x transpose this should be greater than equal to 0 for every x that is a definition of uh, positive semi definiteness ok. What about uh, if I consider f to be 1 fourth x to the power 4, what about this function? Is this convex? What is the second order derivative of this function? 3 x square right. So, f double prime x is 3 x square which we know is greater than equal to 0. It is not exactly uh, strictly greater than 0 because we know that at x equal to 0 this would be 0, but this is greater than equal to 0 and this is convex. So, these are few ways through which uh, you can yeah. Yeah, twice continuously differentiable yes. Even here we need f f to be continuously differentiable. So, that is a good point. So, f is continuously differentiable and likewise you need f is twice continuously differentiable. Yeah, thanks for pointing that.